This is Vosh, a YouTuber and self-proclaimed libertarian socialist, whatever that means. Recently, Vosh featured one of my videos on his live stream, and that video was about union workers going on strike at a Frito-Lay plant in Kansas. The Frito-Lay strike and analysis. Somebody just pointed this out in chat. Don't walk, run, productions. I think I covered this guy's video once before, and I remember him being a dumb f so... So clearly, Vosh is off to a very respectful and objective start. <laughs> Whatever. But before we get into it, let me recap my video and the strike itself. The union claimed that many of their workers at the Frito-Lay facility worked 84-hour work weeks, working seven days a week, 12 hours a day. Frito-Lay claimed that this was an exaggeration and provided numbers saying that out of 850 employees, only 19 worked 84 hours in a given work week, with 16 of those as a result of employees volunteering for overtime. They also claimed that the total number of work weeks at 84 hours is less than 0.1% for the total of the site. Now, a couple things here. Frito-Lay provided statistics to counter the union's claims. Are they accurate? Maybe, maybe not. But if they weren't, the union could have countered Frito-Lay by providing their own numbers and evidence. They could have put out a statement saying that Frito-Lay's numbers were inaccurate, but they didn't. Also on July 1st, Frito-Lay states that they proposed to the union that they would cap hours to 60 hours a week. This is what you call a solution to a problem. Regardless of how many employees were working 84 hours in a given week, the overtime cap would have ended it once and for all. But when the union went on strike, they claimed that they were fighting for an end to 84 hour work weeks, even though Frito-Lay agreed to cap work weeks at 60 hours. And according to labornotes.org, the union took the 60 hour limit off the table because some union members had expressed concerns that the cap would mean higher seniority workers would end up being forced to work on their weekends after lower seniority workers reached the 60 hour limit. In other words, the union claimed that they didn't want anyone to work 84 hours in a week and didn't like the amount of forced overtime sprung in their employees. Frito-Lay said, okay. And then the union was like, ah, never mind. So a reasonable person could come to the conclusion that if the union took the overtime limit off the table, that it really wasn't a big issue in the first place, right? Now, ironically, I started investigating the story of the strike because I saw headlines like this and thought, these workers are forced to work 84 hours a week to make crappy snack food? That's insane. But with all things, there are two sides to every story. And that brings us to Bosch's response to my video. News outlets like the Washington Post and CBS News will type up headlines complete with the union's talking points. Whether or not 84 hour work weeks are a real issue. What do you mean, whether or not they're a real issue? Even if they happen once, they're a real issue. They don't have to happen all the time. Look, this article is even being conservative with its language include 84 hour work weeks. What do you mean conservative in its language? Right there in the article, it says many of the plants, 800 plus workers toil seven days a week and up to 12 hours a day. How is this conservative language? It's just quoting the union. And as I pointed out, if it were a legitimate issue, the union wouldn't have taken the overtime cap provision out of the contract. In a press release, Frito-Lay states, we believe claims about work hours at the Topeka facility have been grossly exaggerated. Out of 850 employees in Topeka, only 20, approximately 2%, averaged over 60 hours a week. So to be accurate, 2.35% of the employees at the Topeka plant average over 60 hours a week. So, so wait, here's a question. Why are you doubting what somebody said because they work for unions, but then taking Frito-Lay at their word? Is this a joke? No, I am doubting the union because I am using logic and reason. The union said that many of our workers work 84 hours a week. Then Frito-Lay gave specific numbers, saying that only 20 workers averaged more than 60 hours a week. To recap, the union made broad accusations. The company countered with a plausible response, and then the union didn't or couldn't dispute them. 
Frito Lay states are records Again? indicate. Wait, wait, no way. <laughs> wait, really? First of all, I just want to. So first of all, we shouldn't trust Frito Lay statement on any of this. Why? What is the reason we shouldn't trust Frito Lay statement? At least I provided reasons for doubting the union's claims. Vosh didn't provide anything. So while Vosh is falsely accusing me of bootlicking Frito Lay, he's blindly licking the union's ass. Next, I talk about the 16 workers who supposedly volunteered to work 84 hours in a week. Okay. So if true, the people working 84 hours a week are making bank. As for the three- That- That's the- That's the defense? Hey, at least they're getting overtime pay for their unfathomable work hours. Shame they can't use it on anything because they don't have any time to experience any of the joys of life. So Vash's argument is working 84 hours a week doesn't give them time to experience any of the joys of life. Well, maybe not in the short term, but maybe they have long-term goals. They're working overtime to buy a house or a car. Maybe they're saving up for their child's education. Maybe they're saving up for a vacation. But whatever their reasons, why is Vash against someone volunteering to work long hours and pull in a huge amount of money? Well, here's Vash's reasoning. There's no guarantee they're getting that overtime pay. What? If they're willing to, like, be this ruthlessly exploitative, they're probably willing to break overtime payment laws as well. Just because something works in theory doesn't mean that it necessarily works in practice. So without anything to back up that statement, Vosh is accusing Frito-Lay of wage theft. And if it were true that the workers weren't actually being paid overtime, don't you think that they would have mentioned it? Or, I don't know, gone on strike over it? So even though I made it clear at the beginning of the video that the local 218 went on strike and mentioned it repeatedly, Vosh thought that this entire time that they weren't. Anthony Shelton claims the union has repeatedly asked the company to hire more workers. And yet despite- So the union, are they in a union or is it, uh, wait, hold on, are, hold on. So it took 13 minutes into talking about my video that Vosh finally realizes that we're talking about a union going on strike. <laughs> That's some big brain stuff right there. According to Frida Lay, hourly wages at the Topeka plant range from 18.35 an hour to 36.91 per hour. And even on the low end, 18.35 an hour in Kansas is pretty good, right? Or was that whole- That's, it. first of all, that's a pretty big range. Second of all, I'm really not inclined to trust anything Frito-Lay says or does here. Again, Vosh doesn't give a reason for doubting Frito-Lay. It's all about his feelings. What he's not considering that hourly wages of $18.35 to $36.91 per hour seems about right for a union shop. But then again, moments before, he didn't even know it was a union shop. Are the Frito-Lay Kansas workers in a union? Great job, genius. If you work $20 an hour, 40 hours a week, that's 800 a week, which is 3,200 a month, which is what? About 40,000 a year? So full time at 20 hours is about 40,000 a year, which is below the median income for a household. I mean- He's comparing an individual's yearly salary to median household income, which can consist of two or more incomes. Why is he comparing the two? Because he doesn't know what he's talking about. If they're doing hard work, if they want higher pay, they should be able to push for it. And by the way, here's a quick question. Hey, I'm guessing this guy's a big lover of freedom and free market economics. Why do unions not have a right to push for a higher wage? Why do workers not have a, a right to push for a higher wage? I never said that unions and workers don't have the right to push for higher wages. Not a single time. But go ahead, watch my video and tell me the exact quote where I said that unions and workers shouldn't be allowed to negotiate better benefits or pay. Because again, I never said that. Anyway, next in Vosh's half-baked response, I talk about how the union went on strike in the middle of negotiations, even though Frito-Lay was agreeing to their demands. They proposed to cap required work at 60 hours per week and eliminate the so-called squeeze shifts. Okay. So what did the union do? <laughs> they went on strike anyway. And then they complained about the squeeze shifts to anyone that would listen. What? Why wouldn't they? No, Vosh. The question is, why would they? Because Frito-Lay told the union that they would get rid of the squeeze shifts. Oh wait, it's a statement from Frito-Lay. Am I allowed to trust it? So they offered a solution to the union 
and then the union went on strike and complained about wanting to end squeeze shifts. You know, the same squeeze shifts that Frito-Lay said they would end. Wait, hold on. You can't simultaneously bitch about the unions not doing enough, but then also say the unions were pushing for too much. Do you notice how these are two contradictory positions? Again, I never said that they were pushing for too much. Not once. Vosh is acting like I said, 84 hours a week. That's it. Suck it up, losers. Or a 4% raise. <laughs> what do they think the company's made of money? And does a 4% raise over two years sound like a lot? <laughs> Not really. But again, that's what the union proposed. But with Vosh, we're only allowed to criticize the company, not the union, because they're for the working man or whatever. The new contract includes a 4% raise over two years, which the union proposed and Frito-Lay accepted before the strike. The contract also eliminates squeeze shifts, which Frito-Lay proposed before the strike. The only new thing that benefits workers in the contract is that they're guaranteed at least one day off each week. Compared to no guarantee for any days off, that is a pretty big jump. So they striked for 19 days and got the ability to live their life for one day? That, that's something. From what I can tell, a guaranteed day off for all workers was not part of the negotiations pre-strike, as it was not mentioned as an issue in either free delay statement or the union statements. And obviously, wanting a guaranteed day off is a very reasonable ask. So my feeling is that maybe the union didn't have to go on strike to get it, but who knows. But more importantly, this has been a union shop for a long time. Why wasn't there a guaranteed day off in the first place? Kind of makes no sense. So what did the strike accomplish? <laughs> Not much. While the workers are going to see a 4% increase in pay over the next two years, the ones who went on strike That's lost like three weeks worth of pay, which they will never be able to make up. And you're not mentioning the day off? The, the day off for people who ha didn't have a guarantee at a day off? You're not going to mention that? Okay, yeah. Wait, I'm not going to mention the thing that I just mentioned? The thing that he wouldn't even have known about had I not mentioned it? Yet he has the audacity to call me impressively stupid. <laughs> yeah, sure, Vosh. What a f***ing boo- What a pathetic little wispy bearded soy faced f Pot meets kettle. And with that, thanks for watching. Be sure that you're still subscribed to the channel, and I hope to see you next time, if there is next time.